morning. How are we? Oh, oh no, 11 minutes past 12. Afternoon. How are we? Probably at the end. Check the lap. Not been learning my Russian lately. And so I made a concerted effort to do another couple of lessons last night. So that's all jolly good. I hope everybody's well. So I'm going to start off with some housekeeping. Um, because it takes time to populate the people who are going to watch this episode live. And at the same time, I need to be chatting to the people who are watching it on replay. Hello, people who are watching it on replay already. I need a structure, so I'm going to start off with the structure. First thing that if also, also I forget to invite, I forget to put the invite button on so that people get invited to come along and join the show and uh, personalise and have their questions in context. So my housekeeping is going to be, firstly, to invite people. Uh, if you would like to join the show, if you are watching live, I'm going to put it here to join the show. Oh, can't even spell. Join the show and ask away. Click here. So what that does is it puts you... Can you see that in the comments? If you click on that, it will put you in a little waiting room. A little notification comes up that you're waiting. And possibly, if I'm not too much in midstream, I'll finish what I'm saying and then ask you your question for your, for your context and your personalization. Obviously, people ask questions. I did the referendum week not so long ago. I hope to answer one or two of those. It won't necessarily be in the context or personalization that applies so if you've got a question and you really want it to apply to you i know that what i say is a generalization and you may not see how it applies to your specific situation and you need to give me that context and i need to give you that personalization in which case click the little link join the join the show helen hahn hi helen from oz i suppose that this could be austria <laughs> from au yeah. Anyway, thank you for joining. Second part of housekeeping. If you've been following the story of Lumi and his blind eyes and his treatment, it's going pretty well at the moment. Um, he's had one scrape across one cornea. That seems to be healing nicely. The other one is healed. Um, sorry, not, not the operation. The other eye is healed from ulcers. Possibly they will reappear. If they reappear, he will also get a scrape on that eye as well to take the cornea off. So the longer we can keep them two operations apart, the better. Because his right eye is getting is, is operated on and getting better. Oh, everything's reversed on this camera. I forgot that. That's right in my world. <laughs> and uh, if that can get better and get his vision, then we can scrape the second one. If the ulcers don't return, of course, he's got away with not having a second operation, which is marvellous. To fund the operation, I've got an audience of about 50,000 across my pages and on various, various, on my email list, of course. And so to fund the operation, when, when Lumi first got ill and he just went blind in both eyes, it was put up there that maybe both eyes should be removed straight away. It was also put up there that maybe he should be put down straight away. I plumped for operating. Uh, the bill's just past the 10 grand mark and I've got various products to, to help pay for that. So, look at this one. This is the most popular so far, the calendar. It's a calendar just about Luminoso. I will do another calendar that is about the center about all the horses i'll do another calendar which is about the the animals that stampede animals we've got lots of different animals including horses but this is the luminosa calendar guys you are going to buy a calendar anyway you are going to buy christmas presents anyway so this calendar luminoso calendar is available on amazon if you can't remember the shopify address if you want to go to the shopify and see the calendar and the posters and the glass blocks and the t-shirts and the everything and everything then go along to his shop the luminoso collection dot 
my spot my shopify.com and the hyphen luminoso hyphen so what i thought i'd do for my housekeeping to get to get going is that these have got the most amazing pictures and i'm just going to talk about pictures that mean something look this this february is beautiful that's by a renowned artist called mark harvey go and look at his stuff it's amazing what we got there oh another renowned artist where are we oh oh you can't see that sun's too bright Bibs. But i'll talk about the cover i'm gonna have a little chat as housekeeping i'm gonna talk about that cover look at that photo there there's lumi burning <laughs> he's not burning um he's standing behind a, a a fire bowl which we set into the arena i made a video at the time about desensitizing the horses whenever you get an opportunity um it also encompasses horses and fire well, people assume straight away that horses are petrified of fire well this horse clearly doesn't look that that bothered at all it's a great opportunity to find out if you went and had a barbecue in in your horse's field and it's, it's, i've got i mean i've got 12 horses in that particular field i'm thinking oh, if i had a barbecue there some horses would come over to see if they could get a bit of burger <laughs> some but some horses wouldn't come over and some horses wouldn't give a monkeys no not all horses are scared of fire and why do we assume they are humans have evolved with horses we're we're a partnership uh, and dogs for that matter horses are no more the peristalki ponies than we are the common ancestor that came down from the trees than dogs are wolves we evolved together and because we evolved together as a trio we also as a trio evolved with fire we wouldn't be who we are if we hadn't invented cooking and the horses were with us when we did that in fact for most of history horses have been doing absolutely everything so please don't dumb down your horses that they can't cope with fire because for all of our history except this little last bit They've absolutely been with fire. That's where we were cooking. That's where we were um, industrializing. It's just where we were. And you get the iconic picture of a cowboy sitting, looking out over the mountains with his little bedroll out. Who's there beside him by his campfire as he makes his coffee? Oh, that's a good point. You can see the picture already in your head, can't you? Cowboy, campfire, horse. I don't, I don't know why people say that they're scared of fire. They're scared of anything that they haven't met before. And then if you introduce them to enough things, uh, you know, they're scared of a football. If someone kicks a football, unless they're in footballs all the time, they're scared of peacocks when they first see a peacock, unless they see peacocks all the time. The reason I chose peacocks is because we've got some peacocks and they'll probably appear later when they run across the arena with regularity. So there's a whole load of things in this picture. But another point that I want to make, as well as getting the horses used to the fire, was we were about to do a show. And part of the scene of that show, the opening scene, actually, was blizzards. Uh, four, four Russian guys, four Cossacks were sort of um, crouched down in the darkness. Then as, as the fire grew up, they they became illuminated and then they started doing their flashy sword dancing which is called flunky rothka and the lights of the show were all glinting off the swords it was super it was a really good opening the music was all moody it was marvelous now i know given that this horse here quite happily has the rider strapped with with uh, fireworks strapped to their backs going around riding this horse I know that he's not going to be bothered by a little fireball in the centre of the show. However, what harm would it do just to utterly, utterly make sure that he's fine before the show? All it means is putting the fireball in the arena, getting the horses that are going to do the show 
out and ride them around completely ignoring it. Why go to that extra trouble? Because why not go to that extra trouble? You've got to exercise them anyway. You've got to do something with them anyway. So it's it, it's so sensible. To, and when we get any any request for photo shoots or anything, and the people say, can your horse do this? Can it go in this environment? Can it wear this or whatever? Even though we know they do it, we practice them anyway. Because why not? It's just turning that 100% into 100% underlined in bold and highlighted. So that's the amount of bite sizes, little, I mean, it's such a little bite size to take a horse that's used to fire and train it to be used to fire is a ridiculously little bite size, but it just ensures that everything's absolutely fine. And why not? And why not? So that's the story behind that opening opening shot. And uh, it's ended up in a lovely, beautiful photograph. There we are. So I'm just going to say hello to anybody who's around. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, some people have got their calendars. Guys, if you've got calendars, take photos of them in situ and uh, stick them on my page. I would absolutely love to see them. There we are. Oh, hello. I've got a... Little, little question here. I'm not visual and struggle with meditation and such. Want to change worried nerves to excited nerves. Any tips? Yes. Yes. There's a little technique called the swish technique. Now, if you imagine at some point, obviously, um, maybe not to do with horses, maybe to do with something else, there was some part in your life where, where you felt that excitement that you're talking about otherwise you wouldn't know what it feels uh, zooming zooming downhill on a bicycle or or something some potentially scary situation where you simply enjoyed it so much that it was entirely enjoyable so you have got the ability to enjoy a potentially scary situation now when i think of let me give an example. When I do shows and present shows, to some people, I'm aware that that would be the most terrifying thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> have a thousand people leaning on a fence in an arena looking at you, going, come on then, entertain us. And I can understand that. Public speaking is, is possibly one of the most common fears of modern society. I can do that. Not only can I do it, I can see it would be potentially scary. And there's plenty, there's plenty of times in my career when it's been utterly mortifying. When the PA breaks down, it's always bad. But when the PA breaks down and everything goes silent and you just have to do your best, that is bad. The microphone goes off, music goes off, everything else. It is not the microphone breaking and going silent is nowhere near as scary as the mic go little thing it's got be repaired and then you yes the microphones work and then you don't know whether to give the microphone back because it whether to keep hold of the microphone because you never know the guy over there desperately wiggling. It's mortifying that I can understand that to go out into the next show, being aware that you may be embarrassed in front of many people, to some people would just be horrific. However, it's not horrific to me when the microphone works. I have enough faith that I can carry it even if it does break down because I have done before. I hate it, but I can do it. So there's a potential where I could decide that I don't like this at all. I don't want to do it, but actually I'm pretty cool with it. I, in fact, I enjoy it. I do enjoy presenting these shows. When the show goes well, when... I've got a thousand people 
laughing. The jokes are coming out right. They're enjoying the horses. Afterwards, they're coming up and saying, this is the best thing I've ever seen and stuff like that. It, it, it builds me up. I, I love it. I like the attention. There we are. So when I think of that, I can see it in my mind eye now, and I'm already looking up and to the right. That, uh, on this video screen, that's my right. Because that's my enjoyment of a potentially scary situation. That is, as you described, how can I change worried nerves to excited nerves? I know I can do that. That's my situation. If I pick another situation, such as... Um, a heavy business meeting with with um, people that I don't really know, or that I I uh, especially if they if they if they've got something that I want and I have to impress them, I have to make my pitch. I might feel nervous already. I'm looking down and to the left because I already know because I study this stuff that my anxious, worried nerves of a situation lives down and to the left. So the swish technique is quite simply building up. So I've got a picture down here of, of a meeting with important people. I've got a picture up here of me controlling thousands of people and getting them to do what I want, even though it could go wrong. And all I do is I just take these feelings. And you know the way that you drag and drop a picture on your computer if you want to replace something, you just drag and drop it. I take the emotions from this positive picture and I just overlay, I just drag and drop them, overlaying this picture. So I can see my meeting going on there. And I'm taking those feelings of being in control, getting compliments, inspiring people, making people feel really happy, getting them to see what I want them to see. And I'm overlaying that. It's such a simple technique. If you want to look it up, it's on the internet, swish technique. You don't have to do any crazy visualization. You don't have to do any meditation. Um, There you go. You can have that for free. That that's what I do. Eventually, it comes down to just a little movement like that. Like a Jedi. These are not the droids you're looking for. And it's funny. I was speaking to someone the day before yesterday about this very thing and helping them. So it, it's a super powerful technique. And the only way it doesn't work is if you don't do it. Yeah, it's called swish technique. Look it up. That's absolutely super. Right, right, right. Yes, if you if you've got a calendar, if you've got if you've got a poster, and if you've got it framed yet, um, the limited edition prints from Richard Phipps and from Mark Harvey, uh, they're going out. At the, I should write it. In. Let me write it. In. I'll do some more housekeeping. Luminoso Collection. www dot the hyphen luminoso hyphen collection. Dot my shop I got. Okay, what we were saying, you're going to buy a calendar anyway. Of course you are, because there's a new year coming. Um, you'll also be buying Christmas presents and a super Christmas present, very popular, is horsey calendars. So why not, if you're going to buy a calendar anyway, if you watch my programs anyway, if you know Lumi anyway, if you're getting the the story of his eyes and everything anyway get this calendar it seems, it seems, it seems crazy i know that lo i get loads of people uh writing me emails and i've really helped them in that well this is a chance you're going to buy a calendar anyway it's not a charity pill it's not a go fund me although plenty of people told me to do a go fund me but hey i'm a business <laughs> How can a business turn around and just go begging for money? You get nothing in return, just give me it because I want it. It's not the way it works. Now, I'm happy to extend my business to all you lovely people who are going to buy a calendar anyway. So help help a dude out, help little little stallion out and go to his shop, buy their calendar. If you can't find the shop, the link's in the chat. So I recently did, and the reason why I'm, on, I recently did a referendum week. Gives me a good excuse to put out amusing pictures of 
politicians on horses. That's always funny. Referendum week. What's your number one issue with your horse? If you didn't see the referendum week, then you could put your question here or you can. Let me just put the link on again. You can join the show right now and ask Control V. There we are, the links in there. So let me just bob on to the first question that we've got here. So I wonder if that will copy the picture as well. I'm just trying to copy the whole of the question. What's your number one issue? And we got a response here. Pop that on there. If I can put that in the comments, maybe. It hasn't, it hasn't chosen the picture as well. Has it? Okay, let's have a little look there. Okay, so it hasn't copied the picture as well. There's the comment that somebody gave. Um, the horse is rearing and twisting at a bit of a jump, uh, well, reasonably high rear, sort of middling, middling height rear, enough to put the bejesus up here, I imagine. Um, and the number one issue from this person was reacting like this, the rear and the twist, when asked to move away from the other horses, they were in the same arena as him. He just didn't want to be more than six foot away. And then a little it's about the image. That wasn't part of the question. So can, can I answer that? I think possibly I can. First of all, if this is your question and you want more personalization or context, click on the link, join the show. It's, it's in the comments there and give us more personalization. It's going to be hard to get all the context from one sentence. But I think the fact that it's all in one sentence with not much context is possibly part of the answer and the picture of the rearing horse. So firstly, got a horse rearing because it doesn't want to move away from the other horses so my question to you is it a rearing issue that is your number one issue or is it a napping issue for those people from other countries napping means not wanting to leave the other horses so i'm also a bit concerned about the brevity of the answer as in you give a picture of a horse rearing which wasn't totally necessary unless you're enjoying the part of celebrating how dangerous horses are now that might sound a bit weird but it happens a lot it happens a lot 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 in nervous rider uh, overcoming lack of confidence facebook pages nervous rider pages and i try to keep my my page free of sensationalism however I do get it quite a lot because obviously people with a lack of confidence are coming to my page to try and be helped. But in the comments, they bring their um, pre-programming with them. So I'm wondering with the very short sentence here. So the context that we need is, are you saying that he just rears when he naps, assuming it's a he? she just rears when they nap just when you're moving away because that's the implication of the horse the the writing and the picture and if you're one of these persons who doesn't really want to put the detail into the question it makes it very difficult for me to answer but it does give you a chance to celebrate the horse's bad behavior if I'm not being clear, let me let me say it like this. I often get emails saying, I used to be confident, but now I've completely lost my confidence. My my arms go sweaty, my arms are heavy, um, there's vomit on my sweater already, mon spaghetti. Uh, there's uh, I, my heart beats, I, I can't move, I can't breathe, I can't think on the horse, I'm just panicking. When I come to the jump, I, I just freeze and uh, description, description, description. So we've got two parts. I used to be confident is described in one sentence and then a novel of what I'm what I'm like now, which is understandable. But equally, you could have put, I used to be confident. I used to be able to go anywhere. I used to ride the horse in nothing but a rug and a, a, a head collar. We used to jump over anything and I really enjoyed it. I probably enjoyed being with my horse. And now I've lost my confidence. Can you help? 
would get the same message over without focusing in a unbalanced manner on the negative. The message would be getting over. Can, can, can you help me? I've lost my confidence. Gets over the message. Just like, Lord, um, my number one issue with the horse is it naps and rears, carries as much information as, and here's a picture of it. And he didn't want to be more than six foot away. Now, quite honestly, six foot away, I'm six foot tall. Now, it's entirely possible that the horse doesn't want to be more than six foot away, but I suspect that that's an exaggeration. I suspect. Now, I have had a horse like this that literally stuck itself to other horses. I mean, not even six foot away. So it might be one of those. So you must forgive me if I'm, I'm reading your question and I'm getting it wrong. We haven't got the personalization. And if you want to, to emphasize it a bit more, but. I would think that six foot away is an exaggeration. So I'm just putting it out there that to come with a picture, which is a thousand words, picture which just takes a thousand words of it all going wrong, plus a very short message about it going wrong and an exaggeration, just possibly might be putting you more in the let's celebrate the horse's bad behavior than let's find a solution. So let's say it's napping and let's say it is and also you don't say whether or not it's dangerous rearing whether it's dangerous to you rearing uh whether in fact the rearing's a problem particularly because some people love that kind of nonsense they love it oh naughty horse they love it love it love it getting it right they love it i i don't love it i can do it but i don't love it so is that spoiling your eyes? Is that part of the problem? Is, is it the number one issue as in he's doing this, but I'm getting my way through it. And all I, all I ever think about is that is also possible. So I haven't really got enough context, but we'll assume that the problem is that he's napping. I would say that from what the brief thing that I've got, the problem is the horse is napping. And, and I'm assuming that this is, not good for you you're not enjoying it you're not um overcoming it and you're not moving forwards and you want to know the bite size pieces that you can use one of the bite size pieces that people vastly 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 underestimate is long reining if you're getting on the horse and getting frightened and and the horse is rearing and you're getting nervous about it and i assume you are otherwise you wouldn't be on the page and long reining is the most incredible, safe way of being able to drive your horse forward, being able to put your determination into going forwards, whilst at the same time testing. Because when, when people get frightened, obviously, they clamp on a little. I'm just going to move this comment now <laughs> because I can't see me. When people get frightened, obviously, you clamp onto the horse a little bit and maybe get a little bit nervous and take up the contact a bit more which is just going to make it worse. When you're long reining and you're not on top, you're not frightened. You're just with a intellectual brain observing what the horse does. You've got the reins, so you can you could put on more pressure if you wanted to. You've got a whip from behind to tap it on and, and put determination to go forward. You've got your voice, get on, get on, get on. So you can do these things while being completely safe and work out exactly what it is that you can do and you can't do according to that napping at the time. Then we get into napping. Well, if we're training our horse about napping, that is if you're from another country, sticking to the other horses and starting to create a fuss. There's different ways that you can break those down, such as arranging, we've all got mobile phones that round the corner, up the, up the way on the hack or whatever, um your friend's waiting for you at a predetermined time we're humans we're clever so you could get the horse out maybe the horse is refusing to go and you've got to lead it past a, a, a sticking point maybe it doesn't like going past the gate or whatever and it's making a fuss and then we get managed to get around the corner and oh lo and behold there's another horse there well you could build that up over a series of weeks months so that the, the horse is expecting there to be other horses there
is one possibility. Another possibility for napping or refusing to go forwards in, in any particular area, and a super, super tool that I use all the time, is reversing. I've got a horse and I'm going out, da, 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 and there's a dead badger by the road, stinking to high heaven, and the horse smells it, and ugh, absolutely refuses to go forwards, and maybe decides it wants to go back to its mates and starts napping a bit and rearing a bit. A great thing is turn it round, now it's facing back to the stables, and reverse it, and it, it won't rear because it, it wants to go that way. And so there's nothing to rear and turn about. And you walk backwards, pass, pass the dead badger, turn it round, and then it'll go forward. I can understand if you're on a horse that is going to frighten you with the rearing and spinning and everything else, that you might not want to do the turning round. It may even be that you've never had the courage to learn how to reverse your horse because you're scared it's going to rear or, or whatever. That's where long reining is absolutely brilliant. Because if you do a, a, a whole set of long reining, you, first of all, you've got to start training the horse. You've got to train it to get used to the long lines, maybe touching it, its rump and, and, and waving around its legs, the new bit of kit that's going to just tap against its sides. Um, you've got so much learning to do to even start. You can even set up little obstacle courses and really use your imagination, little gateways, little boxes. You've seen the scurry driving at, at shows where they've got to do an, any amount of stuff. All long reining is, is driving without the, the cart. You could do endless obstacles. And, and by the time you've done those, going under things, over things, round things, reversing, by the time you go up and you see a dead badger, you have to reverse past that. Pretty soon you're going, well, not pretty soon, at the correct time, you're going to do your little obstacle course and you're going to think, oh, I've done that, sat on that. And then a bite size might be to get somebody else on and watch them do exactly the same course. And you're going, I can do that. And then maybe to try it yourself on a different horse. You really can do that. And you can see how that would build up. To the point where you feel that you can tell the horse exactly what to do. Plus now you've got six months or a year or 18 months of you being in charge in a very teacher-like, very instructor-like, do this and it, it's fine. Do this, it's fine. Do as I say, do as I say. And by the time you've saved the horse from the walking over the tarp of death or walking under the tarp of death or going to, through the box of death, things that it might have been frightened about before, you're confident manner because you're not even on the bloody thing. When you've had a confident teacher for 18 months, it's going to make no difference to you that the teacher's now on your back. You're still going to respond to the voice and you're still going to respond to the relationship and your confidence will have got through that. That's what I suspect that this person was asking. In terms of the rearing, uh, on YouTube, I've done loads. Of, I've done loads of rearing. Come to the course. We do a whole section on rearing, um, or even better, get my um, bolting, bucking, and rearing free download. I need the. Uh, yes, I need. Tell you what, I'll put it on after. I've got a free download, which is about rearing and bolting and bucking, the three main issues of riders. It's to get people who've never heard of me, who are, if they've got a problem, if the problem with their confidence, they are going to worry about one of these three things. So it's a, a, it's a little free download to introduce myself to new people. So if someone's nervous of their horses, someone says, oh, look, take Carl Greenwood's little bit of writing. It's also got the first chapter of my book added on so that in an attempt to gain a customer who can um, buy my book and then start maybe watching my videos, then tell people about me, and then they'll buy Lumi's calendar and pay for his vet bill. And then I get to help people more and more. So the bolting, bucking, and rearing download is everything that I know about these things that I've learned over the years. It's completely free. So that's not the issue. The issue is building up your relationship with your horse 
that it doesn't feel the need to go napping and rearing because you are with confidence telling it what to do and it will obey you because you've got a whole 18 months of it obeying you and and not just obeying in a heavy way but obeying you and having a good time there we are let's have a quick look at the comments oh that's nice penny, penny. i like that working towards hacking out alone super you could break that down as well there's nothing wrong with boxing your horse up to the other end of the village and just walking back as a start because you know the horse is going to go back people worry about the going out alone hacking out hacking back uh, it's easy because the horse is coming home anyway just a suggestion lovely lovely thank you very much everybody for joining i hope it's been interesting i'll put on the link to the bolting bucking and rearing and hopefully speak to you later if you've got any questions stick them in the comments and we'll get around to them in due course thanks for listening hope it's helped <laughs>